podcast all about embodied healing and sacred sensuality. I am Tanya Hirsch and this podcast is intended to guide you home to your truth and feminine power. Each episode is designed to inspire you to create a pleasure-filled life that is in alignment with your soul. Let's drop the mask and dive right in. Our infinity, our divinity. Today is going to be an interesting <laughs> podcast episode where I share my recent Bufu experience with you. This has been such a profound experience for me that is still integrating, but I feel ready to share because it's grounded in now and I try to find the right words because it's beyond words what you experience in this. <sighs> As you know, I joined an ayahuasca retreat in Mexico beginning of December last year, end of November, beginning of December, with Shani, the woman that I'm doing the Mexico retreat end of March with. And this woman has completely blown my mind, has opened my heart, and the way she holds space inspired me so much to step even further into my heart-centered leadership, the way I show up. So... I just love this woman so much and I'm so excited for you to get to know her during this retreat if you decide to join in Mexico. So what is Bufo? What is what is Bufo? If you've never heard about this, um, it's the strongest form of DMT. It's 5-MeO DMT. And it's the closest the human body can experience death. It's the it's what the brain ex extracts. I'm not the perfect one to explain the chemical stuff, but <laughs> it's the closest uh, you can get to a death or birth um, experience because the brain does the same when you die or when you get born. And wow, I mean, we have done Cambo the day before. We've done Temascal and cacao, and we opened already our vessel, and I think I was so ready to experience that. And I had glimpses of it in the past but this experience really blew my mind and it showed me what I always knew already but I I felt it with every cell of my being and maybe you've noticed a change in me since I came back from that trip my life changed a lot the way I feel and the way I show up changed a lot so a lot of that goes back to Bufo but again as always, when I share about these experiences, I don't recommend looking for it. It will find you when you're ready in the most divine timing. Like when I used to live my life more from my mind, I thought I, I, I want, I want it and I want it now. And I was looking for it. And I even flew to Costa Rica to go to a hippie commune to live there. And I wanted to do ayahuasca there. And then I realized, you, I don't really feel so safe here. <laughs> And I decided to not do it. And it took me another four years until it came to me in the most divine timing. And I'm so grateful I waited. I'm always a bit impatient with the things. I want them now. If I know what I want, I want it now. And I want it fast. But if your soul is ready, you will attract the possibility to join. So please don't Google Bufo Retreat somewhere. It will find you when you're ready for it. Because if you push it, you might not get a pleasurable experience. And I don't want that for you. And I want you to take responsibility for yourself. So you be honest when you feel ready. You open your feet for it. It will naturally come to you. Someone will invite you. Someone will tell you about it. You will get a recommendation. You don't need to look for it. That's very important for me to mention. So Bufo, you can Google about it. It's the highest form of DMT that I described before. It comes from a toad, from this big frog. They don't kill the frog. I'm very happy that they don't. Um, the frog is from Mexico, the toad. And it ex extracts something like a steam. And they just put a glass on top and the steam catch the steam. And then they dry it. And it looks almost like a caramel chip. It's very thin, light brownish. And after this, um, my experience, after I share this, I will... Again, share something really vulnerable, but I also feel it's very beautiful. I add only on YouTube. So if you're listening to this on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or uh, wherever you listen to it, I don't put the video 
at the end of this, I only put the video on YouTube so you can see my whole 27 minute experience that someone filmed while I was having my experience with Bufo. And it's a very vulnerable, raw, expressive video. So what Bufo does, and I've read a little bit about it, but I wasn't really afraid because I just knew I'm going to like it. It was a feeling that I, I will resonate with it. And I went first, also with the combo. I went first because I knew if I see other people doing it, my mind will kick in and I won't be able to do it. So when the shamans asked if someone wants to go first, I was like, yeah, I'm ready. I want to do it. <laughs> and <clears throat> they explained a lot and it was a safe space. I felt really safe and held and the shamans were so powerful. Shani's voice just, if you hear her singing, it's like an angel is singing. I, pff, there's no words for, for her magic. Like the way she holds space, the way she shows up, the way she opens her heart, it's, it has just her being has changed my life. <laughs> and so you see it in the video after. First, I sit down and then they burn the, this little chip in a, in a glass that is closed with a straw. So they burn it and you smoke the, the smoke. You just inhale the smoke and I don't smoke. So it's, it was a bit challenging for me to breathe in the air. I had to kind of swallow it. I was like, okay. And then you take as much as you can and then you hold your breath. And she told me before, if you still, if I still hear her voice, you have to breathe in more. So I was already like, woo, it already expanded and was already powerful, but I could still hear her voice while I was falling backwards. So I was, you see it in the video, I, I smoke a little bit more. And then, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, like I said, it's hard to find words for it, but I will try to describe it. So when I fell backwards on the pillow and I had five people holding me because I had a stiff neck and the day before I passed out during a massage because I was in so much pain and I couldn't even lift my head and a massage lady came and we tried all of us to lift my head millimeter by millimeter and when I tried to sit up I just fainted and when I woke up um, yeah that's another story for another day it was very powerful a lot of baby trauma was being released in that moment but when I fell back, they were all catching me. So because I was afraid with my neck, they were all laying me down. And then it just, they say it brings you back to God. It connects you back to source. But what definitely happens if you don't resist it is that your soul leaves your body. It's like, it feels like you're dying and your soul gets out of your body. For some, it's even they go inside. I've had different experiences. For me, it felt like, my soul goes out of my body and I'm becoming one with the universe. And I've had this experience during many breathwork sessions, during ayahuasca, even, even during sex, my energetic orgasm, that's kind of the feeling, <laughs> my favorite feeling in the world. If you become one with the universe, if there's no body, if there's just space and love and bliss and yeah. So Everything for me, it was more black and it became kind of a kaleidoscope, but with black and gray colors. So some people see white colors. For me, it was black and gray. And it just exploded into space until I became the universe and I became pure love. And I became just a soul so connected to source. I became source. I saw that we all have the same essence. Our souls have the same essence. And I understood that before, but I became that soul that was part of everything. And everything was part of me. And it felt like a moment of eternity. So while I was in this pure blissful space, my intention was coming home. And this is what it felt like. It felt like a warm embrace of my natural state of being. But beyond words, beyond what the human mind can understand. My nose is itchy. <laughs> it felt like... anything that I ever experienced before I felt like I'm becoming God the creator the same creation that created earth and the universe I became that source I became pure light and pure love and 
it felt like I've been there for 5,000 years. I couldn't even put a number. I thought for the first time I understood what it means that time doesn't exist. It felt like a moment of eternity. If someone would have told me you've been gone five million years, I would have believed them because it felt like a moment of eternity. Being pure love, being pure consciousness, being in space, being the universe. It felt like the soul came home. And what was interesting that I don't really remember, but when I saw the video, I could kind of remember. So the way your body, your soul leaves your body (laughs) is different for every single one. And I'm happy I went first because I couldn't even watch some of the other people. So some people were screaming, some people were fighting, some people were purging, some people were moving, some people would put their eyes that you can only see the white thing in the eye. A lot of different reactions. And some people couldn't even go there, even though the DMT is so high, they couldn't, the soul couldn't leave the body because there was too much fear and too much control. And for me, what my soul needed to really leave my body is a, um, it almost felt like a primal release, like my voice needed to release, which is interesting because it's been such a big part of my journey to unleash my voice and to not allow the blockages and the fear to get in the way to really show up the way my soul wants to express. And when I fell down on the pillow, I made three really, you could call it awkward noises. And you see it in the video at the end. I, I make these primal sounds And they came from really deep up. And this is what my soul needed to really be completely gone. And when I came into the state that I tried to describe, but it really is something that there's no words for. And everyone I spoke to that also did before, they all say the same. They all say there's no words because it's divine. It's beyond the human experience. It's like becoming God. (laughs) And while I was in that state, I really thought they tried to get me back. And I didn't want to because I loved the state so much. So I thought, "Mm." I thought they tried and I'm here forever now. But I was peaceful with that. It was different than my ayahuasca ceremony that I shared a little bit already. That I might do a whole episode because it was so profound. But this one is still not really integrated fully yet. So. Bufo was just divine. It was beyond anything you could ever imagine as possible. (sighs) And after this moment of eternity, I could feel all the other souls and I could feel the source of soul and the creation and that we are part of that, that we have the same power that created the universe inside of us. We literally, it's the same energy, the same essence. And we can use that. (laughs) That's why our soul chose to come into our body because we, in our essence, we are here to create, to use this power to allow the divine energy to flow through us, to create something that will change the world and will make this world a better place. But it's your choice if you choose in this lifetime to allow your trauma, your conditioning, your limitation to keep you in that small box or if you decide to do the healing work to crack open to remember how powerful your soul is to remember why you chose why you signed up for all of this why you signed up for this planet why you came here there's a reason every single soul came here with a reason and we forget and we make it so hard sometimes to get caught up in the stories of density and pain and oh life is so hard and the universe is against us But if you always remember that your soul chose this path and you signed up, if you want to admit it or not, you signed up for these experiences. Your soul knew what challenges you needed to overcome before you came here. And you you did it. And that means that you can create anything you desire. And that the reason why you came here is so much bigger than you. And I really wish from the bottom of my heart that you choose to remember how divine you are and how powerful you are, that you can create all of your desires. And I truly believe that if you have a desire or a vision, 
it's not here for no reason. It's here because it's telling you that there's more waiting that what you're seeing will make this world a better place. For me, it's my retreat center. I've been seeing it for 10 years now. And it still seems pretty big, but it feels already so close because I'm becoming a vibrational match for it. I know that this center will heal so many people. It will make them come home to their true essence. That I know, I don't know how and I don't need to know how, but I know it will be more beautiful and powerful than I can ever imagine. And that there's space for magic. I create space for magic. If I would try to know everything and how to get there and make spreadsheets on how to get there, I would limit what's waiting for me. But we need that trust and that connection to the divine. And that's why a daily devotional spiritual practice is so important. So after this moment of eternity that I thought really it was like a couple of thousand years. If I would have opened my eyes and the space holder would have had a long beard, I wouldn't have been surprised. I would be there. Of course, I was gone for forever. It felt like forever. <laughs> and it's hard. Why is my nose so itchy? <laughs> I never had that. <laughs> um, and then I they sprayed something. You hear when she sprays? After I think it was gone for like seven minutes, but it really felt like forever. And then she sprayed um, a scent and that brought me back into my body. And I slowly came back from this state into my body. This whole experience only lasts like 20 minutes. And I came back into my body and I became aware of like... Phew, a body. I have a body. I have skin. I have bones. I have emotions. I was like, ah, this is so special <laughs> because if we're just a soul and pure consciousness, we don't have that. And I was like, ah, yes, it's amazing. <laughs> and I started to feel pure bliss. When I came back into my body, I felt this orgasmic energy running through my body. I could feel the radiance, the bliss, the ecstatic sensation and my body even reacted so that's what you see when I come back I'm breathing and my body is moving and that was when the orgasmic energy that's your life force energy sexual energy is life force energy it kept on running through my body and it was really powerful and then I came back into my head and I was like do I want to give everyone the pleasure of <laughs> witnessing me having an energetic orgasm <laughs> So I was aware suddenly that there's people around watching. We were sitting in a circle and everyone was around me. And then it turned into this emotional release. So after this blissful waves, I you see me crying. And this was not a sad cry. It was this deep remembrance. It's like, wow, how powerful my soul is. How beautiful and divine my light is. And how precious this human experience is. And I came back into my body and I I just cried my eyes out. I, I can't even describe the gratitude that I felt for being back in my body. And compared, I mean, time, you have enough time. Time doesn't really exist out there when you're dead. <laughs> Until your cho soul chooses to incarnate again. So make this world a better place. And don't hold back. That's what I really got out of this. Like It's so precious. Every single second is so precious in this human experience. And how can we make the most out of it without our conditioning and limitations holding us back? And then we, one of the shamans came and she did some Reiki, I think. You see it in the video. She put her hand above my my, my mouth and my heart and I just kept on crying and crying and it, it was such a beautiful moment. And the song that the other shaman played, every time I hear that song, I get drawn back into the sensation because it was so beautiful. And then after that, my body became really sensitive. And if you've listened to my San Pedro experience where I had a three hour energetic orgasm from every sense, <laughs> And I became a goddess and all the things. That's another episode that's really fun to watch. And sometimes I can't believe I'm sharing this online, but I I want to show you that healing can also be fun and doesn't always have to be muddy and death and rebirth. <laughs> it also can give you these amazing experiences if you're willing to experience both. We cannot just have one. 
the deeper we go, the higher we rise. It's always like that. So they were playing some soundboards and I could feel every sound in my organs and different body parts reacted to different vibrations. And you see my body shaking in my belly, then it was my lower belly. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but I remember every sound <laughs> would make my body vibrate. And that's our natural state. We are vibrational beings. And if we are open to receive the vibration, that was a really beautiful experience. That's why sound healing is also so, so powerful. And then after, after this, it was so magical to witness that. Shani, my, my sister, she came and you see her touching my head and she's like, do you want to, do you want to drink something? And I think the first word I said was like, holy shit, <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> I didn't want to come back. It was really a profound, a profound experience that until now has changed my life so much. But like I said, it wasn't that pleasurable for everyone. So there's been different experiences. And especially if you have big ego and need to control, it can be really challenging, especially if your soul doesn't leave your body. And then she helps me up and she thought she needs to help me because my neck was so stiff and I, I had so much pain that I couldn't even move before that session. <laughs> and the crazy thing was that I could just, you see me just getting up. And just before that session, I couldn't even lay down on my own neck. I was so stiff in my neck. And I just could, could get up like nothing happened. And the pain came back because my mind kicked back in. And the human experience always needs a little bit more time than the soul. And I asked Shani, like, how is that possible? And she said, yeah, well, the soul is already whole. The soul is already healed. That's why you could just get up because <laughs> you're already healed. But because the mind doesn't understand it, we come back into this restricted reality. And then um, I got up and I was like, holy shit, this felt like forever. I really thought I took, no, there's no time left because my experience was so long, <laughs> but it was just this moment of eternity. And you cannot describe it with words. You have to experience it, I feel, if you're ready. And then she took me out uh, to the, to the back of the room of the shala and i just felt this desire i felt like i'm reborn i really felt like i i was dead i was dying in a good way i remembered who i really was and i was reborn with a second chance like i felt so open and the plants felt like they were communicating with me and i felt so connected and grateful for this body i have a whole sense of a different sense of gratitude for my life and for me and for for all of me I'm like oh my god every morning I wake up I'm like thank you thank you for this body for this human experience and no matter what it chose today I was so grateful to experience all of it because when you experience what it feels like to have no emotions and nobody and no thoughts this is so precious it is so precious even if it's grief it's so precious to be able to feel that. And I was like, ah, all of it, please. And then I wanted to go back after a few minutes, but then people had really extreme experiences. I saw, you know, the eyes and I saw foam coming out of mouth and like shouting and screaming. And I was in such a divine place that I decided to go into nature. And I went into the jungle and I I literally felt like a goddess. I mean, I'm very connected to the goddess and I feel like a goddess in the human body, but this was something else. I really felt like I'm just light in a human body walking through the jungle and and I was hugging a tree and I felt so connected to the energy of the tree. And then I, 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 I saw a mirror. There was a little toilet, a bathroom, and I looked in the mirror and I saw the jungle behind me and I, I truly saw the divinity in me. I really felt it. And the beautiful thing after Bufo is that you're really, you're right back in your body. Like it's a profound experience, but you're completely back normally. I'm I'm sure there's, if you, I wouldn't do it if you have any, like before you do a check with your doctors, if you take any medications, because it can mess with your brain, the DMT is very powerful. But normally you're back in your body really quickly. And then the next day we did ayahuasca 
and I'm gonna share maybe in the future more about it because it's it's been <laughs> it's been really intense. It took me even further. I not only came back to source, I became a lum luminescent liquid in space that was holding the wisdom of the universe. I could understand everything. It was an expanded luminescent liquid, and I was the wisdom of the universe. I understood everything I could telepathically communicate with different species, with different aliens, with different souls, without talking. And I experienced that in my St. Pedro ceremony too, that there's so much telepathically happening. And, but it was not a beautiful experience. It was like, holy shit, I gave up the biggest gift of my life. I gave up my human experience. I thought I would never make it back. I couldn't even think about making it back. I was in a different galaxy for hours, stuck for hours in this, just being this liquid, being an, yeah, it was not, had nothing to do with humanness. And then when I, <laughs> I'm sharing a little bit now, and I shared a little bit about it in, in a recent episode, but I don't go into all the details, but when I fully, for hours, I just accepted that I'm going to be this, you know, this, whatever it is, intelligence in the universe for the rest of my existence. And I let go of all of my control. I didn't even have the choice if I want control. Everything was taken away. I was just <laughs> this liquid in space. And then when I fully surrendered and accepted that it's going to be like that, she spit me out of the earth in front of the earth and she was like are you ready to see a purpose I was like I would do anything anything to come back into my body I just realized how precious it is and how important and how grateful I am and how I didn't take it for granted all the time how I was still sometimes I didn't want to be there and I she spit me out in front of the earth and she she's like are you ready to see a purpose and I said yes are you ready to commit to it this is your last chance <laughs> or this is the chance you need to like we need you right now and I was like I'm giving everything I'm devoting all of me <sighs> and then I saw my life flashing in front of me and I saw why my soul chose the family I always felt outcasted and not belonging and I didn't feel love why I never experienced love in my whole childhood my, most of my life I never really knew what love was I was looking for it on the outside because I felt such a big hole on the inside because I learned that from such a young age I don't know what it is with my nose <laughs> it's red I'm R Rudolph right now <laughs> and then I saw these moments and they all aligned why I felt like an alien in my family why I felt like an alien in the hometown in the country I grew up why I never could handle the cold why I never belonged to a tribe to a community and then I saw it I was like I'm here to create a new way the way that I saw never felt aligned with my soul because my soul was longing for an authentic way of living where we can show up as we are where we can lead our lives and live our true purpose share our gifts and not hold half of our heart back and it all aligned and I saw why I needed to go through this painful isolation times and I <laughs> I really saw everything I understood everything and then I was this soul in front of the earth and I was in the middle and I looked right and left and I saw all these other powerful souls next to me all powerful new earth leaders all women that are here to create a powerful earth that we are all longing to see a world where we can live in harmony with each other with the divine with nature and where we don't hold back our light and our love where we don't allow our trauma our conditioning to get in the way where we show up fully as we are where we open our hearts again and again and we show others what's possible all of us we went first and then we were lifting a blanket of light on top of the earth and that was so powerful to see. It's not me that has saved the world. It was all of us. We are all on the same mission to make this world a better place. Not all of us will choose it in this lifetime. Not all of us will do the hard healing work that is necessary for your light to shine. But there are many of us. And 
when I came back into my body, I just felt like I've won. Like we made it happen, <laughs> but it was exhausting. And before that, I had aliens coming into my body, healing my womb and my whole body, my generational trauma. Like it was intense. <laughs> it was really intense. And I couldn't move. When I woke up, everyone was talking, eating fruits, and I was just, I couldn't even lift my eyebrow. I could not move. I felt like I've run, ran 10,000 marathons. And so much shifted through that experience. But I will, as I said, share more about it in the future. And for now, I hope this experience inspires you to, first of all, see what a blessing it is to have this life and that it's your choice if you make your story victimize you so you have an excuse to stay stuck and never really fully be seen or if you decide I go no matter what I do what it takes for my soul mission to be birthed into reality to show all of me I'm not holding back anymore because of my trauma and yeah I mean, after this experience, I, I I stayed in Tulum for 10 days and I didn't sleep more than one or two hours a night, but I was so full on energy. So I was really connected to something higher. I had different species visiting me at night. I had my soul leaving my body, going out to space again. I received downloads, I received channels. And that's when my mastermind was born. I was like, I'm not here for everyone. I'm not here for those who are not sure if they want to make this world a better place, if they want to walk this path and only step one foot in. I'm only here for the ones that really, they feel their soul has a big mission bigger than themselves. And they, they are willing to do the work no matter what. And that's why I needed to go through this first. I needed to heal my deepest wounds that made me want to to quit life to see how precious it is how much love there already is inside of us and so let came through that experience of how can we live our lives from our soul from our heart to make this world a better place because we need all of us right now all of us that came here with a big mission don't allow time trauma conditioning limitations to hold you back to make this world a better place through your embodiment and for me the work that i do in my teachings in my mastermind that you can still join we start very soon and we go until for four months we will meet online and you still have to support in in june and beginning of july we will meet in person where we will do these practices in person, which is really powerful. So for the way I work is a combination of embodied healing. We work in the quantum field. We rearrange the system in your family. So your soul has the power to shine its light because if you're entangled in toxic patterns in your family, your light cannot shine. We have to realign and make the system in a harmonious way so you don't hold more than you are supposed to carry. We look at your attachment styles because relationships are the thing that either uplift us or take us down, drain us like nothing else in the world, takes away your power so much and your life force energy and you need your life force energy. We also go into emotional alchemy, into deep emotional releases. We look where is your light still not able to shine because you have trauma and blocks in your body and through sexual healing. We get there. So I work a lot. We will work with the yoni once. We will de-armor your yoni to release the tension so you can become soft. Your womb can become receptive. Your whole body, your nervous system can relax so you can come back to your feminine essence with an open heart to receive not only love and money, but also divine guidance through this channel. So whatever you hear to birth can birth from purity rather than your ego, your mind, I need to make money out of fear. What wants to come through you? What will make this world a better place through your story? Because you took ownership, because you healed that for you so you can show a different way of living and relating. And we will also work a lot with inner union, 
how your inner masculine shows up. So you have the structure in your business. You have the foundation to hold yourself in your emotions. It shows up in every single area of your life. And you also have the feminine that feels safe to flow, to be open, to be playful, to be receptive. So we work with both the masculine and the feminine. And yeah, it's going to be a powerful, transformative journey. Four months in a small group container of women where you step into your next level of heart-centered leadership. And leadership for me really means how you lead your life, how you take decisions. If you're always waiting and never say fully yes or no, or say yes if you don't mean it, if you take decisions out of fear, this is not a healthy way of living your life, in my opinion. If you really want to lead and go first and show people what's possible, we need you in your power. And for that, you need to be willing to go really deep into your subconscious to release the stuck energy that has stopped serving you so many years ago, that is longing to be fed, to be released. And this is a safe container for you to expand, to heal, to grow, to see your blind spots so you can expand beyond what you even thought was possible. So if you feel your soul is resonating, if you feel your soul is ready for this next level of evolution, of growth, send me a message. You can still join us. And other than that, I think that was all I wanted to share. So if you're watching this on YouTube, I will add now the video, the full experience. I'm not going to talk about it anymore. You just can watch the whole experience. Or if you listen to this on Spotify, on iTunes, wherever you listen to your podcast, it will end now. So if you want to see the video, head over to my YouTube channel, Tanya Hirsch, So Naked Podcast, and you can see the full vulnerable experience of me making primal sounds, crying, having almost energetic orgasms. <laughs> and I see you next week. And if this inspired you, please leave a review or share this episode with someone who might be opening up to this world. Much love. Ah, and I just forgot almost that we have the retreat with Shani coming up. So I will be in Tulum for six weeks where I'm guiding a retreat with Shani, with the shaman that I just shared about. It's called Embodied Womb Wisdom. So we will dive into all the magical things that connects you back to your womb, that goes deep into your healing and connects you back to your ancient feminine wisdom because your womb is the portal of creation you can not only receive a soul which is a miracle itself you can also if your channel is clear you can receive divine messages so you can create the mission you came here to do and the mission to lead while your soul incarnated here we will do yoni steaming yoni painting yoni gazing yoni egg initiation we will have temascal the plant medicine journey breast massage womb massage naked photo shooting, flower shower. It's going to be a life-changing and once-in-a-lifetime experience because Shani is going to be a mommy soon. So this is the only, yeah, for now, the only retreat we can offer you. It's going to be out of this world if you really ready to step into the embodied woman. You came here to connect to your body, to your sexuality, to the magic of your sexual energy that can heal the world and heal yourself then send us a message we would love to have you end of march beginning of april and now really goodbye <laughs>
Ay, sí. I was like, I'm taking everyone's space. <laughs>
if you want. This is the water that Shani brought you. Thank you.